One of the greatest sins in our world today is the sin of worry and anxiety, where something is controlling you so much that it is dictating your well-being. You can't sleep, you can't relax, you can't rest, you can't control your temper, you can't control your outburst, because you have been consumed with a situation and a problem that you don't think can be resolved. And when that concern dominates you, it's now no longer concern, it's worry. And we are commanded, we're not requested, we are commanded to not worry. That means it's a sin because you're disobeying God. Now I know that's easier said than done, isn't it? Because you often can't tell things not to come into your mind, not to come into your thinking, not to make you sweat. Sometimes you have no control over what comes in. But I like the adage that says, while you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, you can certainly stop it from making a nest on top of it. So even though these problems are real and they come at us unrequested and undesired, God offers everyone the capacity who is committed to him and who prioritizes him the means by which the birds of worry don't get to make a nest on our heads, on our souls, in our emotions. He will intervene and give us what the Bible calls the peace of God. The peace of God which will trump the anxiety of circumstances. Don't get me wrong. Doesn't mean the problem will dissipate, disappear overnight. It may hang around for a while, but that's exactly what it will do. Hang around. It will not hang on you and control you any longer. One of the consequences of worry is that we no longer are able to keep control of ourselves. One of the blessings of God is when he trumps worry, and you know he's trumped it, when he gives you a peace that passes understanding. What does that mean? You don't understand why you have peace right now in light of what you're going through. That means God, the Holy Spirit, is at work in your soul, controlling your emotions while you wait for him to change your circumstances.